Space Master, fellow Space Masters. Tonight I'd like to invite you to think about taking your time a bit more over things, particularly things you enjoy. So in today's fast paced world, it's quite easy to have your mind on something else and perhaps not get the full benefits out of activities that you really like doing. And to illustrate my points, I'd like to tell you about something that I feel a bit nostalgic for. And it's this the vinyl album, the world P. Now it might seem odd to some a bit nostalgic for something that not only still exists. It's making something of a comeback. But the reason I do is that in the 80s I stopped buying vinyl with the advent of the CD. Now the CD was meant to make this obsolete, but it hasn't happened. I think for a very good reason that this is the best format for listening to music that we've ever had. And here are four reasons why that's the case. Now reason number one is to do with the supposed superiority of the CD. The CD when it was released was said to give us a cleaner sound. It was meant to do away with the background crackles, the hisses, the static that you would associate with vinyl. But in making that state of aim for the CD, the corporations, who just wanted to make more money out of us, entirely missed the point. Now the static that you get with vinyl gives this an atmosphere that CDs and course downloads will just never have. Now if you don't agree with that, and you still own some vinyl or the record player, then later when you go home, you've got on the CD, there'll be nothing, and then the music will kick in almost immediately. Put on an album, and there will be a bit of background noise over there, a little bit of static, that I would suggest builds a sense of occasion, that says to you that this is, stopping and listening to this is an activity worth doing in its own right. Reason number two, also to do with the post superiority of the CD, and also downloads, and that's the convenience of them. Now, with the CD, you can easily flick around tracks. You can just press a few buttons and you can select your favourites again and again, at the expense of ones that you don't like so much. But why would you want to? Now, when I used to buy an LP, I would take it home, I'd put it on my turntable, put the needle on the record, and I'd lie on my bed, and I'd listen to the whole thing from start to finish. And uh, only, sorry, only getting up to change size. Uh, imagine telling that to a young person, you know, to tell them the thing over, like from Mars. <laughs> but it, you did, and a good thing too. Now, there's two good things about listening to an album like that. One, you would hear the record as the artist or band intended. There's a lot to be said about context. Some songs naturally fall in love. But more than that, I would sit or lie through tracks that I didn't like much at first. And I'd listen to them repeatedly, and eventually some of these tracks would click. And I'd start to really enjoy them. Like many of the best things in life, if you put a bit of effort in, they can become some of your firm favourites. Mm -hmm. Now this is a really good case in point. If you're not familiar with it, it's the debut album by The Velvet Underground. Thought by many, myself included, to be the finest savior album ever released. It's got more musical variety than most bands achieve in their entire career. And on the <coughs> there are three tracks sung by a German singer called Nico. And Nico pronounces her English on these tracks perfectly. And I didn't like that at all when I first heard it. You have to understand, when I first listened to this, I was used to listening to gruff male vocalists like Lemmy from Motet. People who didn't sing in the classical sense of the term, let's say. But Nico does, and eventually these tracks, I say, clicked with me, and I'm really glad I took the time and made the effort to get into them, because now they're three of my favourites. In fact, it's precisely because she pronounces every syllable, the sensor stretched the lines out beautifully, and there's, there's something wonderful about her delivery. But if I'd only ever heard this on CD, I'm not sure I'd ever have discovered those tracks. I just don't think I'd have given them the time, I'd have flipped through them to the ones that were more immediate. Uh, oh yeah, and I'm sure there's, you know, I'm sure there's tracks and albums I've bought since the advent of the CD, but I'm missing out on for exactly that reason. Now, reason number three, and for this I actually do need a CD. It's to do with the artwork. This is Pink Floyd's Wishing You Here. I hope you can see it. Um, I used to own a copy of this on vinyl. Unfortunately, I've lost it, but this will illustrate my points as well. Uh, it's one of my favourite examples of great album artwork because it represents many of the major themes on the album. So there's two men shaking hands, this one's on fire. Now he's on fire because we often maintain an emotional distance from each other for fear of being burned. The two men are shaking hands because it's a formal and very empty gesture. As they wish you here, in a very real sense, these two men aren't present with each other. I think it's brilliant, but if I'd only seen every single on the scene, I'm not sure I'd really have noticed it so much, or, or given it the time, because it just doesn't have the same impact as when it's this size. So, in fact, I don't remember any great examples of brilliant album artwork since the advent of the CD. 
I mean, I'm sure they exist, but just, they just don't grab me in the same way. Now, this might be a little sad, but when I was young, I used to sit and flip through my parents' album collection and stare at some of the covers for ages. That is a bit sad, yes, but <laughs> there was something magical about the other worlds they suggested that a booklet and a CD just can't replicate. Now, my fourth reason is this. Going to the bus, sorry, going on the bus to the record shop on a Saturday afternoon, and buying an LP with the hard-earned money your dad had given you, it was a better experience than going to the shops and buying a CD with that same money. Now originally I wasn't going to try and justify that, but I think I can, because it says something about ritual. And there's a pub in London that does something called Classic Album Sunday. And what happens there is everyone comes in, gets a drink and sits down, and they will choose an album, and they will take it out of the sleeve, they will place it carefully on the turntable, place the needle on the record, and everyone will listen to it from start to finish in silence. In short, they treat this with the sort of reverence that CDs and downloads just don't warrant. No, it's true, isn't it? You couldn't have classic downloads Sunday where everyone sits down and you wind up in front and press a button on your iPod. It would be ridiculous. <coughs> Especially if that little shuffle and everyone found out that it was secret number one direction. <laughs> well, that is, you know where you are with the way. So, those are my reasons why vinyl is the best format for listening to music that we've ever had and probably ever will have. But essentially, the point I want to make is that. This, and even more so downloads, represent our more immediate lifestyle, where we demand everything straight away, but we don't really want to put anything. <coughs> this, the LP on the other hand, it invites you to take a bit more time and care and attention over it. Make that bit of extra effort, but I think it has its own rewards. So, whatever it is you enjoy doing, be single-minded about it. Put your all into it, and I think you'll find that it has more to offer than you ever thought on the surface. I don't own a record player anymore, but I'm going to buy one and dig out my old vinyl and in fact start buying some new vinyl as well. So hopefully I can rediscover why I fell in love with music in the first place. This was awesome.